So this is quiz number two. The grades are just finished posting. And um, so let's go through that. Please review. If you have any question, you can always ask me. So this is the extra credit part. The way it goes, you each one of these questions right here, it's two points. But uh, so you add that up and um, it has to be normalized to four points. So that's the value of this first one. So you have some estimates to made and you have some calculations to do. So let's see how they go. So estimate the launching angle with the horizontal made by the initial velocity. So the initial velocity, if you were to kind of a sketch here, you take this point. Okay, wait a second. So you take this point and then you draw the tangent to the point, the tangent to the path on this point. So it's something that goes like this, right? Here is your V naught. So basically, we want this angle here. Um, I had some students, what they did, they got a line here. And, um, and they, they calculate the angle, they estimate the angle on, on the line, which is basically the same. I mean, technically, um, the initial velocity should should not be a line here. It shouldn't shouldn't go a line. Uh, it's a tangent of a point and touch just one point in the line. So this is a better representation, but I accept this one too. And uh, so the way you do, you go to your um, to your graphic and then you read out numbers in there. So for instance, if you take if you take this point over here, take this triangle. See this triangle right here. So here is pretty much 75. So the height of this triangle is 75. And the run is kind of 100, right? So 75 height and 100 is is a run. So tangent of this angle is equal to 75 over 100. So then you go to your calculator. Uh, it's better if it works. So go to your calculator, get 75 over 100. And then you take the arc tangent of it. About 37 degrees. And then you have your angle being estimated. About 37 degrees but um, yeah anywhere around those numbers 40 30 I, I, I consider right but you have to justify how did you do that so this next one is made the X Y marks of the highest point here it is X 300 Y I don't know 110 110 and 300 this is in feet so if you want to in meters divided by three as i recommended so at this point your vy equals zero it's not the velocity but the vy so the projected velocity along this um along the y-axis is equal to zero okay Extrapolate the range, so you have to take 
these and extend a little bit. So we are talking about this point, 450, 500, 550, somewhere around 550. 550. So looking at graph given range is equal 550 feet or range is equal that divided by 3 and then what you get is about 180 meters okay Next, assuming negligible air resistance and using the estimates above, find the initial speed of the ball. So, this is your, your initial speed of the ball, and here's the projection of this initial speed with respect to x, and here's the projection of the initial velocity, I mean, with respect to y. And the angle uh, 37 degrees. So this angle is 37 degrees. 37 degrees. Now basically your V naught Y is equal V naught sine of 37 and V naught X is equal V naught cosine of 37. Okay. So if you use estimates above, so we want to find what is uh, the initial speed. So you want to find v naught. So how do we do that? So there are different ways of doing. One is to use uh, this highest point right here. So if you use this highest point, you know that v y equals zero, not v x, right? but your VY projection at this point is equal to zero. And you have the height, right? The height is, the height is, oh, I'm sorry, I, I did it wrong. Oops, sorry. 300 and 110. So the height, this is your x, y. So the height is one tenth feet, right? So then you have the height is equal one over ten divided by three. That is thirty-seven meters. And then you can apply, for instance, Bernoulli, Bernoulli. Vy square, V naught Y square, minus 2 times 9.8 times final position, minus initial position. Right? And that's it. And then, so you know this is equal to 0. And V naught Y, V naught Y is V naught sine of 37. So V naught sine of 37 squared is equal uh, two times 9.8 times 37, right? So what I did, I add to both sides of the equation, I add V naught Y squared. No, I didn't. I subtract the v naught y square, and then I took the negative out. So then, then we calculate that thing. Um, take square root of that. Um, and divide, divide 
by sine of 37. got some junk numbers here I'm not familiar with this calculator I'm using so let me try again um, just a second okay so um, Okay, 37, sine of 37, okay, and then I square that, okay, and then I divide, two times nine point eight. And and I take a square root of that. So unless I did some some silly thing, not checking my numbers, but you check, make sure I get it right. So I got something around forty five meters per second. That's the initial speed. Okay. What is the baseball total travel time? Well, how do we figure? There are, there are different ways. I mean, some of you calculate the time to reach the highest point and then multiply by two. So some of you use the range calculated here to figure that. So let me use the range for that. So if you take your x projection, x projection, so v naught x, which is v naught cosine of 37 which is 45 cosine of 37 so this is equal to the range divided by the time in other words the range is equal v naught cosine of 37 versus time and then you can find the time time is equal to the range divide by 45 cosine of 37 and that is equal to Century ten to divide century ten to divide by divide by forty five. So I got five seconds, somewhere around five seconds. Check the numbers again. I'm not checking. I have a calculator that I'm not so familiar here. Okay, pretty much that's it. Second one, a car race is at constant speed, 330 kilometers per hour. So since we are going to, um, I mean, it's always safe to convert that to meters per second. So V is equal 330 kilometers per hour this is 330 so we want to divide it by kilometers but we don't want to change the quantity of this speed so that's how we do so we divide it by kilometer multiply it by a thousand meters which is one kilometer 
and we have hours here so we want to multiply by hours so we can divide but to keep it the same we divide by that which is the amount of seconds in one hour so that leads us with it's 92 about 92 meters per second so what is the car radio acceleration? So there are two types of acceleration. One is the radial or centripetal, and that is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius. So the speed we know is constant, right? 92 meters per second. That must be squared divided by one kilometer. One kilometer is a thousand meters, thousand meters. So our centripetal acceleration will be Um, getting here 8.5 meters per square second. So let me just check that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the di the, the a thousand is the diameter. So this should be that. Sorry, over two. Uh, uh, this is r, right? So the radius. The radius is thousand divided by two meters so 500 sorry this should be 500 this should be 500 and and this gives about 17 meters per square second Okay. B, what is the, and, and um, so if, if you have a path like this, so you have a track and we are looking down that track. So at any point in the track, the, the radial acceleration always point, points towards the center. So these arrow are your centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration, okay? And this is a path. The brown circle here is a path. So that's the answer to part A. Part B, uh, it is what? Part B, what is the tangential acceleration? So what is the tangential acceleration? And I put a hint here. Um, remember that tangent Tangent acceleration is the one related to speeding up or slowing down, right? So the tangent acceleration, if the car has a constant speed, so the tangent ac tangential acceleration is zero. It's not speeding up or slowing down. And the total, the total acceleration um, is the sum of a, it's going to be centripetal plus the tangential, but this is zero. So the only acceleration there is, is the centripetal one. Okay. So the value of it is this, the magnitude is this, the direction depends on, you know, which part of the curve you are, but that's the sketch. Number three, you throw a rock from the top of a tall building with an initial velocity of five meters per second, making a 60 degrees angle above the horizontal. It's like the exercise that I ask you guys to do in class, in the lab. So 60 degrees, this is five meters per second. So, um, then you should know your v naught x. Uh, 
is right here. And that is VNR cosine of 60. And your VNR Y is right there. So VNR X is 5 cosine of 60. Your VNR Y is 5 sine of 60. Sixty sine times five that's four point three. So we have our Vx and Vy. How far down has the rock falling in three point five seconds? So if you do a sketch of this exercise. This is the tall building right here, right? And it's thrown like that. So in 3.5 seconds, let's say it's right here, how far down it has fallen? So you want to find it this much here, right? Is your del y. So um, if you use your equations for y displacement, y minus y naught, this is what you want to find. That's how far down, how far down has the rock fallen in 3.5 seconds. So then you place v naught y t minus half 9.8 t squared. So you want to find this. This is what you want to find del y, v no y is 4.3 times 3.5 minus 4.9 times 3.5 squared. Let's see what we got. 4.3 times 3.5 minus 4.9 times 0.5 squared 44 point so this is equal to 44.8 right 44.8 negative because um, because this is you you are basically subtracting this position from that position, which is bigger, right? So we have a negative number. So it went down, it went down forty four, forty five meters or so. What would what would your answer be? If the rock had been thrown with a 60 degrees angle below horizontal. So what if now the rock has been thrown like this? That's your v naught. This is a 60 degrees angle. So this is your v naught. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is your v naught x doesn't change, but your v naught y now, your v naught y has a negative sign. Look at that. So your Vino X is the same, doesn't change. But your Vino Y is now negative for 0.3 meters per second. So when you do your equation, so you have negative 4.3 times 3.5 minus have 9.8 oops 3.5 square and then you're gonna get let me see uh, 4.3 times 3.5 3.5 
so and I got 75. So now if you show with that angle, it would go down 75 meters in 3.5 seconds. What is the velocity of the rock after it has traveled? 3.5 seconds assume the launch angle is 60 degrees above horizontal. Well, let's say um, you take Vy is equal V null Y minus 9.80. So your Vy, the projected velocity along, because basically you have this, right? And then it falls. So 3.5, let's say somewhere here. In fact, let me, let me raise this. Is a bad, it's a bad thing. So if you take a point here that is at time 3.5 seconds, right? So your velocity vector is some tangent at that point, but it has a Vx component and has a Vy component. See, your Vy in my drawing is going to be negative, right? So, but I, I don't know. So this Vy projection is what I'm trying to calculate here. Because I know my Vx is, is the 2.5 meters per second. The Vx projection never changes. It's always the same. In projectile motion, your Vx never changes. It's always the same because there is no acceleration in the x direction. So uh, 4.3 minus 9.8 times 3.5 and then and that's gonna be 4.3 minus 9.8 times 3.5 is exactly 30. So we have Vx, we have, v, and, and it should be negative. No, wait a second, did something wrong. Negative 30. Negative 30. Let me just confirm that. 4.3 minus 9.8 times 3.5. Yeah, negative 30. Um, you must specify magnitude. What is magnitude? Magnitude. You do the square root, right? 30 square plus uh, 2.5 square. This is Vx square. And this is my Vy square. And this is going to be, uh, the magnitude is going to be 30 square plus 2.5 square equal and we take a square root of this nonsense it's almost 30.1 it's basically 30 meters per second in fact it's 30.1 I'm just rounding 30.1 but I'm rounding and to find the angle tangent of this angle theta here tangent of theta is your Vy over Vx. And then you calculate what that is. 30.1 divided by 2.5. Uh, wait a second, 30.1 divided by 2.5. And then you take the arc tangent of that. Uh, where is it? It's right here. Uh, so the angle is about 
85 degrees, so the angle is 35. 85 degrees is below ho horizontal. What is this? Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, all or nothing, a woman sailing a boat at night is following directions to a dock. The instructions read to first sail uh, 27.5 meters in the direction 66 degrees north of east from her current location. So let's do a little diagram of this stuff here. So north, south, east, and west. 25, 27.5 in the direction, 66 north of east. So north of east, that's what it is. And 27.5 meters, so this is the magnitude of this vector. And the other one is 66 degrees north of east. Uh, I'm sorry. And then 30 meters in a direction, which is 112 north of east. So this is basically north of 100 north of east. So it's pretty much this is what it is. So, which means you go over here, so you get to this point, and then you go in that direction, right? Which means this angle here is 112 uh, north of east, okay? And then we want to find the term, the final location of the woman, how far was she from initial location. So you want to find this vector D right here. You want to find D. How do we find? Well, you first, you take the first vector, call it A, and that is equal based on its projections, 27.5, cosine of 66, the x direction, plus 27.5 sine of 66 in the y direction. Vector b is equal to, um, you could use the entire things. Um, you, you take uh, 30 cosine of uh, one, one, two, or or you could also um, do what I do in class sometimes. So this angle is 90 degrees right here, and this angle is 22, 22. So this is the same thing as B is 30 cosine of 22, cosine of the angle, the angle, um, I'm sorry. Projecting x would be negative 30 uh, sine of 22, 22 plus 30 cosine of 22. Um, why am I not? If, so whatever you want to do is correct. So this is going to be, um, then what you do, your vector D is pretty much the sum of those two vectors. This is an x direction plus the 
this is in the y direction. So we operate this 27.5 times cosine of 66 minus 30 that multiply sine of 22. I know I've got a number here that I'm going to say 27.5 times cosine of 66. This is 0 0.4. Only this term here is 0 0.4. And the other one is, that's 0 0.037. Seven, and then you do the same over there and then you have the projections of uh, vector d in x and y so the magnitude which is how far the woman was with respect from her origin would be uh, this um, uh, 0.4 minus 0.37 square it's a very small number point zero 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 nine almost doesn't have anything in x plus let's see the other one twenty seven point five times sine of sixty six plus thirty times cosine of 22 equal and then we take this no sense any square that's 0 0.85 0 0.86 so take square root of that so this is about 0 0.9 meters 0 0.90 meters so it's pretty much that's what it is okay so let me know if you need any further explanation thank you